I'm going to give you three stages. Here's how it works. I'm going to give you basic fitness and nutrition and fun facts. Things that you might find interesting that you can take with you and say, oh, I didn't know that. And you can enjoy that. And then we're going to go with myths, facts, and tips. What's a myth? Here. True. And number three, I'm going to take off the gloves. If anybody wants to stay after we're all done with your questions, I'll give you all of your body types. I'll never tell you not to eat ice cream because you like it. I think you should eat whatever you like, but you have to be un understand what it does. You never tell, I never tell anybody to just completely eliminate fried chicken. If they love fried chicken, just don't eat it four to five days a week, and here's what will happen if you do. Rather, they become selective. They don't stock their house, office, or cars with snacks. Not eating may lead to short-term weight loss. It is long-term planning and execution that leads to long-term health and fitness. When asked, most people don't really enjoy the foods that make them unfit or unhealthy. Rather, food is used to cope with anger, depression, nerves, and stress. Fit and healthy people don't use food as therapy. They don't eat out of boredom. They find other ways to deal with emotion, mental diversion, and there's a couple of suggestions for you. College campuses, the freshman 15 was born off of this right here. You're in a new, env your environments have changed. Things are different. When your environment changes, you have to find things that satisfy comfort. And a lot of times it's food. Not all the time, but a lot of time. So we eat. And we don't know what we're eating. And plus, I think you mentioned certain things are only open at 10 or 11 o'clock at night. So you got to plan for it. You have to ask yourself this question. What the hell do you want? You got to ask yourself that question. You're old enough to say, this is what I want. How do you want to look? <laughs> How many people do you think get up in the morning and say, my God, could I look any hotter than this? <laughs> Except for you. <laughs> Daryl is thinking. He's mu but, you know, you take Daryl out of the room. How many people wake up and say, oh, my God, I am frigging hot. Let me get out so people can look at me right here. Look at me. Are you looking? That's what I'm saying. Not very many people. Is that arrogant or is that confident? Myth or truth? Eating while watching television is a good way to limit your intake of food because it distracts you and forces a person to slow their eating. Got that question? Just this fall. Hey, I, is, I heard that when you, if you eat while you watch, true or false? False, you eat more because you're not aware of what you're eating, so you eat more. All right. Next, I just won't eat. That'll do it. Get this more than you would think. You know, if I want to change my body composition, I want to lose, I just won't eat. Reminder, not eating may lead to short-term weight loss. It is long-term planning and execution that leads to long-term health and fitness. Okay, take a deep breath, because you're going to want to remember this. Let's say that I want to lose weight. So I reduce my calories by 500 a day. So at the end of one week, Daryl, are you with me? Seven times five would be how many calories if I reduced it by 500? 3,500 calories. Are you with me? Okay. How many calories are in a pound of fat? 3,500. So at the end of one week, I've lost a pound of body fat. Do you follow me? At the end of three weeks, I've lost three pounds. Guess what? It's going to stop. Why? The body's metabolic engine will catch up. True or false? If you're used to eating if I'm used to eating 3,000 calories a day and I drop it down to 2,500, at the end of three weeks, my body's going to be able to get by just as well on 2,500. So for me to lose weight, I've got to drop down another 500. And then at the end of three more weeks, I've lost this. Pretty soon, I'm going to run out of calories, and I'm doing what? I'm starving myself. Heard of that? And then it just stops. Somebody burns 350 calories per day more 
on a daily basis than you and me. Over a week, they're going to lose how much? About a pound. Right. So over a month, they've lost four or five pounds. At the end of a year, how much have they lost? A lot. By just 300, by just walking a little bit more. And I'm going to get into that in a second. Walking a mile versus running a mile. Does it seem like the same thing? Let's say Samantha goes out and runs a mile. And Kate goes and walks a mile. At the end of the mile, who burned more calories? Or did they burn the same? Say it. Say it. Be confident. The same. They burned the same. How is that possible? They, went, they took mass and they moved at the same distance. The difference is Sam might have run that mile in nine minutes. You and I walked it. It might have taken us 14. So she burned more calories per minute. But at the end, we burned the same amount of calories. So is walking good for you? Extraordinarily good for you. Yes, Kate? I'm not trying to take away from walking, because I understand that you can burn the same amount of calories walking a mile versus running. But in the long run, if you run a mile, your basal metabolic rate will increase. And Go up dramatically. Event, like after you continue working out, whereas walking, you never actually move your heart rate up. Correct. So what you burn in that mile is what you burn in that mile, whereas in running, you can burn that in a mile, but you, in your heart rate is still increasing. She's going, through a, she's going through a really cool phenomenon that at the end, if you want it, I'll tell you all about it. She's talking about basal metabolic rate. She's talking about the burn. Let's say that we went and ran hard for six miles, okay? And Kate took this crew and they went out and walked for six miles. We ran six miles. Our, think of your body as a furnace, like it's hot and it's burning really hot. Well, it takes a lot longer to come down. So we're burning many more calories post-exercise throughout the day than Kate's group of walkers. I'm busy, I'm young, I can sacrifice sleep. It's a college campus. I hear this all the time. I'm busy, I'm young, I don't, I don't have time to sleep. Maybe the biggest myth of all time, being sleep deprived uh, stimulates appetite, especially cravings for carbs. What happens with proper sleep? Weight loss becomes much, much easier. Very rare that you find somebody that's sleep deprived and successfully changes their body composition. It's too hard to do because the hormones aren't working correctly to allow it to happen. Most people who have lost weight and kept it off uh, weigh themselves once a week. A gain of two to three pounds motivates them to shift into an action plan. If you're going to weigh yourself, I do not weigh myself. All the Ironmans that I've ever done, I don't have a speedometer on my bike. I never know how many calories I eat every day. I do everything by feel. I do it by workload. Am I hungry? If so, how hungry am I? Am I full? Okay, let's stop eating. It's all done by feel. Trying to tell somebody, you need 1,430 calories, and there's 65 calories in this beans, and to eat this muffin is 12 calories. If you put the butter on, that's another 37 calories. It's go crazy. Can you handle that? I can't handle it. Identify your eating pattern. Check your required amount of sleep. Have you placed it? How important is your health to you? You've got to place a value. I place a very high value on health and fitness because it gets me things. It gets me more energy. It gets me all the things that it's supposed to give me, and I like that. I wish I didn't have to do it, but I do. Identify your level of action on achieving a health and fit. All right, let's talk about fat, because everybody, oh, I want, you know, fat. There's fat in here, there's fat in there. I want to just get this off the table so I can move on to the four things I can give you on campus. Fat alone does not make you fat. We talked about it a little bit earlier. You know, it's the amount of calories taken in, calories expended. There are certain types of fats that you want to avoid. Fat helps curve hunger, slows the absorption of sugar, and oftentimes makes food taste really good. All right, on some college campuses, men and women drink beer. I know that in the state of Missouri it's illegal, 
so this does not apply to you, but I think it's worth discussing for the friends of yours that go to colleges and other campuses. <laughs> Are we clear on that? We clear? All right. Every gram of alcohol has 7.5 calories. Every gram of uh, fat has 9. Every gram of carbs and protein has 4. A typical beer has 150 calories. One six pack of beer has about 900 calories. So if you're going to go out and you're going to have six beers when you graduate, you're going to want to know that this is what happens.